So I like my clients to come in with their brow makeup done. Um, that way you can see what it is they're comfortable with when they fill in their own eyebrows. Um, and I'll take a picture of their makeup. After that, I'm gonna clean off their brows, take off, close your eyes. Make sure you have them close their eyes, otherwise this alcohol will burn. I'm gonna remove any makeup, dirt, oil. It's a lot easier to draw on the skin when there's not makeup on there, and plus you want a clean surface when you go to microblades. After you take your before pictures, don't forget to do that, you'll look at their client and you'll look at their natural asymmetry. Everyone has natural asymmetry. Um, actually, yours is really not that bad. But you wanna just look at their natural shape. Clients always say, I want my eyebrows to look natural. Basically, you want their brows to be on their brow bone. And not only that, you also wanna work with as much of their natural hair as possible. So yes, you can improve the symmetry, but you don't wanna to totally change one eyebrow to fit the other because if you don't have hair to blend in, it just doesn't flow and it doesn't look as natural. I use my caliper, so this is just a ruler. This one has many years on it, but it's just a ruler and we're gonna find her vertical lines. So basically we're finding where the beginning of her brow starts, where the arch is, and where the end. The first thing you wanna do for your vertical lines is find the center of their face. So you, you wanna split their face in half. Okay, so if you pinch right here, like right at their uh, bridge, and draw right in the middle, that is a good way to split the face in half, but always check it, because this trick doesn't work perfectly on everyone. So I just draw a line in the middle, I check, and that looks pretty center. Now you wanna measure, so you use your caliper, and you wanna measure from the tip of their nose, so not the outside of their nose, because essentially we're creating a frame for the eye. And if you know, like when you have a frame, um, the frame is gonna be bigger than your picture, so same thing here, you want the eyebrow to actually frame, be a little outside of the eye. So we're gonna go from the tip of her nose. This also works better just because um, some people have wider noses, so. So see how I'm measuring from the tip of her nose and you wanna hold your caliper steady. So I use my thumb to kind of hold the bar part so it doesn't wiggle and I get it right on her nose and then I hold it against her face, okay? So you don't wanna just like lightly put it there. You wanna make sure that you're really like holding it against her face so it doesn't move. And then when you go to draw your line, you really wanna hug that bar. So see how my pencil is coming right next to the bar? And you wanna create a straight line. So now we have our first line and we'll do the same thing on both sides. So we'll come to this side and I like to draw my line on the inside. This bar probably measures out to about one millimeter. So if you were to come on the outside, it would actually make the thickness of your brow thicker. So we don't want that. We just wanna use that inside line. Now when you find your point C, you wanna to come to the outside of the nose, let that bar sit right on the outside of that nostril. You don't wanna go over their lashes. When you go against their face, you want to hold the bar lush against their face. So I'm gonna hold it with my left hand. Again, I'm gonna draw on the inside, the side that is closest to the eyebrow. So now I'll turn this way. We'll do the same thing, because whatever we do on one side, we need to do on the other. So I'm gonna hold the bar on the outside of her nostril. I'm gonna come underneath her lashes and hold right to the outside of her eye. And then pull that bar up against their like right by their temple. So now we have these two lines right here. Basically, it's just measuring the sat or the length of her eyebrow. We're gonna have to measure the eyebrow with a caliper, but it doesn't bend or mold with the face. So my little trick is if you measure right where the eyebrow is. So I'm not gonna measure up here or down here. So see how I'm staying right where her actual eyebrow hair is? So however you measure it on one side, that's how you have to measure on the other side. So that means I'm going to measure right where her eyebrow is, the brow bone itself. So I'm gonna hold it on A and on C and it matches. But if I were to hold it like this, it looks like it's too short. So I think a lot of people get lost here because it's hard to see if it's symmetrical to the other side because they're holding the caliper wrong. Now we wanna find her arch. 
So earlier I was talking about you want to go with their, their bone structure. Now she has a pretty defined arch. You can see where it is. Normally, like the rule that we learn is you have your client look at you. So go ahead and look at me and you would measure anywhere between the outside of her iris or to the end of the white part. Okay, so it can range. Go ahead and close your eyes. When I'm actually doing this on a client, I think maybe because I've been doing it for a while, I just look at where their eyebrow meets that highest part, like where the brow hair itself has that natural highest arch. If they don't have hair, a little trick you can do is if you take your pinky and you hold it right underneath their brow. So like I'm right underneath her brow. So see if I kind of lift up, you can see right where the, um, where that skin kind of rounds or folds over. Well, that's where her natural arch is. So if they don't have hair and you can't see it, you can use that little trick or you can create one for them, but you do want to make sure that it, it's, you're putting the arch right where the brow bone rounds up. And then again, whatever we do to one side, we're going to do the, to the other. I am just going to go with where her natural arch is on this side and I'm going to see if they match because we want the measurements to be symmetrical. Nailed it. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to um, pull out the brow mapping string. I really like this one because it's super pigmented. This is just gonna help me create like a rough draft for her eyebrows. So what's cool about this is it actually molds to the face. Now what's important to remember is you're holding it like dental floss. So I find it to be most comfortable if you do it on your middle fingers. That way you can use your thumb and your pointer fingers to um, create your lines, okay? Don't forget that if you aren't holding it taut, it's not gonna make a line. So the tighter you hold it, the cleaner and more precise the line is gonna be. Now I think this is where a lot of people get messed up. What they do is they, um, they try to make the eyes, or I'm sorry, the eyebrows symmetrical. And I wanna use like quotations because there really is no such thing as perfectly symmetrical eyebrows. So what I found to work better is if you make the eyebrows symmetrical but framing the eyeballs. So if we use her eyeballs as what we're keeping it parallel to instead of the ground, they're going to fit her face. So a lot of people would go like this and if I'm standing up straight right now and this is a straight line and it would look like this brow is lower, but it's really not because this eye is a little lower. Her head naturally kind of tilts a little this way. So if I were to move that eyebrow up to make it quote unquote symmetrical, it would look ridiculous because the space between this eyebrow and this eye would be much larger. Instead, we're going to base it off of her eyes. So the first parallel line we want to find is number one. So we're trying to find point one. And then I use my thumb and my pointer fingers and I'm going to come right at where her eyebrow starts. So right here. Now we want to make sure that this doesn't go too low because this is essentially where point one is going to be. So we, this is creating point one right there. If someone has um, like a really rounded out nose right here, it can be a little harder. So if you need to connect your lines, you can do that. Um, hers isn't too rounded out, so it's pretty easy to do. Now we want to find out the thickness of her brow. What I do always is I go based off the thickest part of their natural eyebrow. So you really want everything to match their face. You wouldn't want to put these really thick brows on someone who has really small eyes and small lips, but for her, we can go right like in the middle. If I come right here, what I'm looking for is what the thickness is going to be. So I'm just going to hug this hairline. I'm gonna come right here. I'm holding that string super taut. And if I just pull one way, so pull it a little to the left, you can create a line. If you go like this back and forth, it creates a smudged out line. Just keep it super tight, hold it with your thumbs and press into their skin and then slide it one way or the other. So now we have point one and point two. All right, now for point three, this is gonna be the upper arch, all right? I'm gonna give myself a little more slack. I'm gonna hold on her temples with my pinky. I'm gonna start on her left brow just because I'm right-handed, so it's easier for me to control with my right hand. 
So I'm going to come to that highest point of her arch or where her hair grows. Now, if someone doesn't have hair, what you could essentially do is just kind of let it roll against their forehead. And when it kind of stops on that brow bone, that's where you can start the line. They don't need to have hair to do this but you do need to give yourself enough slack, otherwise it's gonna be hard to pull it around. So I start on the far left side, and now slowly turn to the right. I'm going to pull it over to the other side, and I'm gonna make sure before I make that line that I'm parallel to those other two uh, horizontal lines I made. So make sure this line you're creating is parallel to the other two horizontal lines. And then I slowly, I'm holding the string taut, I slowly pull it one way and it makes a line, okay? Again, if you go back and forth, that line's gonna be super smudgy. How you can find point four. So this is your lower arch. This is really going to depend, in my opinion, on the client's natural hair, on their hair growth. So what I like to do is brush their hair up this one is a lot harder to do because the way their brow kind of folds under like this. So I'll just show you, but then I'll show you another trick. I'm gonna stabilize on her temples with my pinky. Again, I'm going to hug that hairline. So see how I am just hugging her hairline right here? And when I say hairline, I mean the bottom. We don't wanna to come too low. If we don't hug the hairline, this is gonna end up being way too thick. All right, and I'm gonna bring it across. I made the line, it's very hard to see because I need it to hug her hairline. So see, it's right up here. I don't want this line being way down here. Her hair can kind of be in the way. So if it's easier for you to make a little mark with your medical pen, you can do that. To be honest, what I like to do is I just kind of wing it, I'll eyeball it, and then I'll check to make sure that the distance between point one and two are the same and that the distance between point three and where you put point four are the same and never should point three and point four be thicker than point one and two. You always want the thickest part of the brow to be in the front. They can be equal, but it shouldn't be thicker. After you have that, then you wanna find the direction of their tail. If they don't have a tail, what you can do is just follow their brow bone. She has a tail and her eyebrows are actually not that bad, they're pretty <laughs> symmetrical. So what I'm gonna do is in that case, I'm always gonna follow their natural hairline. So I'm going to come right where my upper arch and that point three line meet. So right where that cross is, make sure you're right at that spot. And I'm going to bring it down. So it wraps around her brow bone. Now see how it created this angle right here? That can kind of help you gauge if you're doing it properly on the other side because the angle should be about the same if they're symmetrical. You wanna mark it because it's sometimes hard. You can lose track of your points. You can use a silver pen. This is like a little gel pen and you can put a little dot. So that is just a little gel pen. All I wanna do is connect these and then I like to lay my client down. I'm gonna connect point two and point three. Make sure when you're connecting, you're connecting right on those dots. Hug that hairline. We already have the connection between three and five. So I'm gonna connect one and four, and then four to five. When you connect one to four, I sometimes use my pinky to hold their skin taut. It's easier, but also um, this can fall because where their brow bone kind of curves under. So when you go to make that line, pull up like that. See how it still kind of dropped just the littlest bit, and we don't want that, so. You really have to get right on that hairline and pull up. And then we can clean it up when she lays down. This is just creating like a rough draft for us. Okay, so now you have a rough draft and at this point you can get rid of some of these lines and lay her down and fill it all in. 
and make these lines a lot cleaner. Hold her skin taut and I like to kind of lift it up so it's off their eyelid. So you want to hold your pencil so that you're kind of at like a 90 degree angle. The key here is to work slowly, kind of push that pencil in there. You don't want to just make one big line. This isn't like putting makeup on. Uh, you want to create a very dense line. If it's not on there dense enough, when you go to put on the numbing cream and then wipe it off, it will just wipe away. All right, um, it is a little harder to draw over hair. So if you do need to get rid of some of their hair, you can do that. She doesn't have too much, so I think we'll be okay. So notice how I am constantly um, going over the same line. So when I create a line, I'm not just going like this, but I'm going over it a few times. That's what I mean by dense. So see how much darker it is than just doing one line? That's what's gonna keep it from wiping away. So it's not perfect over there. I still need to clean up those lines, but I have a pretty good idea of what I'm looking at. So I'm gonna come to this side. This line right here, the baseline, especially when you get to the middle part, it can be really hard to draw on. So it is important to really stretch that skin out and get to the flattest part of the brow bone. So um, the main things to remember is that we're rounding out that upper and lower arch when I'm connecting my lines. We need perfectly clean lines. So even though I want them dense, I don't want them really thick. I'm gonna get rid of all these other lines and I'm gonna use these amazing precise Q-tips. So just hold the precise Q-tip flush right up against that line to make these uh, brow mapping lines super crisp. Okay, so when you're all done, just make sure to remark your point A, B, and C and check it out. Make sure that everything looks even. If it helps you, you can fill it in with some brow pencil. Um, if they don't have hair, that does help the client to see. But I would say the most important part is to sit them up, let them look at it, explain what you're gonna be doing, and get their input. Let me tell you all.